for video streaming, gaming, social media, plus smart home devices and security systems. Standard high speed or cellular internet is just too slow, but broadband keeps your home connected. Call or visit Gearhart Broadband online. Many different hospitals in the area have already taken precautionary measures to ensure the safety of the public, their employees, and anyone who enters their hospital. I was able to speak to Dr. Maria Brayman, who is the Vice President of Medical Affairs and Chief Medical Officer for Appalachian Regional Healthcare, on how their hospitals have already planned for weeks on how they will handle their operations in case an outbreak occurs. We two weeks ago halted um, interfacility travel. We have 13 hospitals, 73 clinics, 12 home health care agencies, and uh, two weeks ago we stopped any business travel between those facilities. We also stopped any business travel outside of ARH. We changed our policy to be consistent with what the CDC has recommended so that if you're feeling ill and you have a temperature and respiratory symptoms, just stay home and self-isolate. So uh, generally, our policy has been that you would require a doctor's note and go into the doctor. Uh, we are making efforts to be good partners in the community and um, prevent excess numbers of people showing up in our physician's offices. We also immediately started preparations for a work from home policy that would allow any of our uh, staff members that could easily work from home to be mobilized to do so as appropriate. For any of our ARH employees or physicians who are members of our medical staff who have traveled to any areas where COVID-19 is currently endemic um, or there's community spread or if they've gone on a cruise ship, we are requiring that they not return to work for 14 days um, post uh, returning back to a safe area um, to ensure that they, they're not experiencing any symptoms. Uh, so, so we've already started. We started that policy two weeks ago. We have a command center that we have created that is located in our hazard system center. And that, that command center um, has a mixed, rep, mixed represented group of operational leaders and clinical leaders uh, and financial leaders from across the system. And we're working nonstop in preparation. We have an intranet, a website that we have made available to all of our staff so that there's uh, also communication where we're all getting the same communication immediately via that website. We have led um, educational calls with our first responders, our police officers, and our EMTs, uh, and, as well as our school systems and non-ARH clinics uh, across our regions to help share with them what we're doing to prepare and help them to be prepared. We're shutting things like schools down is not because our kids are actually the most vulnerable to this disease, but they're exactly what you said, Jeremy. They can be carriers, and with it being a carrier, they can carry it back to our vulnerable uh, members of our community, and that uh, spreads illness. And if it's spread and it's spread among our sick and our frail, that can overwhelm us in terms of the ability to even care for them very quickly. If you're healthy and you're just worried and you have, you need information, call the state health department. Call 1-800-722-5725. There's a tremendous amount of misinformation being spread on Facebook and other social media sites that's really scary and, and not true. So they need to be very cautious and um, running into that information. That's exactly right, Jeremy. That we need to encourage our communities to um, to be calm, to know that they have people really dedicated to their safety, and it's through the governor's office, through the state health department, and in their local communities with their hospitals and their health care providers. And we're ready and prepared to take care of anyone who does become with COVID-19.